Hello guys, in today's video I'm going to talk about an Angular reactive form currency pipe again. The reason that previously I made a video, people left comment um, asking questions like, hey, I have a big form, it has a lot of fields with a currency like this, do I have to subscribe to every input field, blah blah blah, so on and so forth, yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, you do not need to subscribe explicitly for every input cell, that would be a too, many, too much code. So I will show some of the solutions uh, I use here. So first I create this shared module. This shared module imports a whole bunch of tools and exports a whole bunch of tools. It also exports a component called input component, uh, which is this guy. So see Angular modules, they can export other modules or export components. This component is just a mat form field. It has a bunch of arguments. Um, and also I have set up a lot of input fields. It also, this shared module uh, has this provides currency pipe, yeah, because you're going to use currency pipe. So this input component is under the shared module. You can see it has a whole bunch of arguments. And these arguments are used to style this input cell. And here, please take note, it has a control, which is a form control. The parent component will pass a form control to this input component. And also, there's an argument called a format, FMT. Whenever this FMT is equal to currency, what happens? I would just use the value of change subscribe thing. And then uh, I would remove the non digits, remove leading zeros, and convert that string to a currency format. So that's the stuff I talked in my previous video. Subscribe to value changes and then reformat your string. Um, so I've created this exported component in my component with the form, which is this guy with the form. What do I do? Um, first, I use a form factory to create a service. This service will create all the form controls. So it's a nested structure. The form. The, look at this guy, the currency form. Yeah, name, profession, salary, and then there's a spouse. The spouse will have three fields names, profession, salary. So the form group at the top level has four properties. One of the property itself is a form group, child form group. So it's a hierarchic structure. And then the this is the component. The template is fairly straightforward. By the way, if the component is too big, you can break up your form into many different child components. As long as you pass the form control to that those ch child components, you're good. You can you don't have to render the big form in a single file. You can break break up a big form. Each handling a uh, subsection of the form controls. So you look at the template. Because I have already created my input component, I just use app input. Consume that input component. This way I have avoided all the boilerplate code. The input field becomes extremely succinct. It just have control. This daughter any function will eliminate the type check. Yes. Uh, here I also create a getter. Get spouse returns that spouse uh, form group, subform group, and I type cast. Um, this form group actually is form group. This uh, intake form control spouse is form group. So in my template, it's very easy. Just use these guys, and whenever input field is currency, I use FMT equals currency. That's it. Just one argument. You do not have to explicitly subscribe to any on change event for every single dollar field. You just delegate that job to this child component. So make, this makes your source code extremely short. Yeah. Now I create another function. Um, it's hosted in this form tools. Sorry, form tools. Traverse tree. So for a tree data structure, you know the form group is a tree data structure. I would check, hey, is this element uh, a string? If it's a string, if it's not empty, and I would use a regular expression. Does the string meet the currency format? If it meets the currency format, I would convert it to a number. So this function is quite useful uh, because it calls itself. It traverses the whole tree nodes. It goes to every node, and if it's a currency format, it will convert that to a string. 
we need to convert it to a number. We need this function because when we submit the form to the database, obviously we want to submit the string. We do not want to submit a as we want to su submit a number. We do not want to submit a string with a dollar symbol, right? So that's why we have this traverse function. If you go back to this currency pipe, you can see here on submit, uh, we, I use object assign to assign the form values to this empty object. Then I call that function. This form tools traverse tree. I, whenever there is a field that is a dollar value, I convert it to a number, and then I can send this cleaned up tree uh, to a data to a database. So you can see here F12. If I submit, you can see the locked value is all number. The strings, this dollar symbol, have been converted to a number. So that's the tree traversing thing. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time just to let you guys know how this is done, and feel free to check out the GitHub repo. Thank you.